<laughs> hey y'all hey welcome to the channel welcome to the channel fab family i am your lead fab not so fab person in charge right now okay y'all first of all vacation braids we on our way to get them mm -hmm. time for another vacation and so that's why we're looking like this but i said hey listen traffic is doing what it's doing going all the what five miles per hour let me adjust this for y'all and um we got some time the light is coming up now so we can you can see me and it's been a while since we've just had a nice little sit down chat so let's chat so first of all guys thank you all so much for your support in that last video about the whole timeshare exit thing now the reason why we did that video a lot of you already know is because i had talked about my timeshare I believe it was in a budget video, right? I talked about how uh, uh, eh, the, the, the maintenance fees went up again this year. I think it's like 1100 this year. Was it 11, 1175? It was almost 1200 perhaps. Between 11 and 1200, okay? And I was just like, this is crazy because they keep going up every year. And even though I rent out my timeshare week every year, honestly, guys, I rent it out. For 1500 for that week. Um, that used to be way better <laughs> when my timeshare maintenance fees were lower because, of course, that 1500 helps well pays for that maintenance fee. And then I have a little bit of something. But now that the timeshare fees are going higher and higher and higher, pretty soon it's going to be a wash. It's going to be a wash. And you can't say, well, run it out for more. Uh uh. Y'all tell me. Are y'all going to pay $1,500 to stay seven days in Virginia Beach, Virginia, on that strip? Don't, don't say, oh, that's a good deal or whatever it is, unless, will you do it? You, not somebody else. You, will you do it? Will you take seven days off from work or out of your life to go to Virginia Beach and stay on the strip for seven days? Because we're not selling it for anything less than seven days. It goes for seven days. It's the week, right? So you got to think about that. It's like, will would you do that? And would you pay $1,500 for that? For a one-bedroom timeshare. Now, the one-bedroom does sleep six because it has... You know how the hotel rooms have two beds in one bedroom. So it's two beds in the bedroom. And then there's a pull-out sofa in the um, sitting area. Personally... I wouldn't because there are better deals to be had in better places. I wouldn't do it. Okay. You can get so much more um, for that price. But there are some people who happen to be out there who are um, Virginia Beach faithfuls. And this is for the 4th of July week. The 4th of July weekend. So there are some people who are faithful to that. That's what they do. That's their routine. And those are the people who usually rent my timeshare year after year after year. But last year i did try to um check into it, possibly raising the prices and what i found was my timeshare is older and so there are nicer places that people could stay even if it's just for a few hundred dollars more and they would rather do that than pay more for uh my older facilities so that's what's happening there so i'm like you know what really don't want this thing and so in that video, some people said, hey, use the timeshare exit team, timeshare exit team, because um, it's easy to say to use something because it sounds simple. So I decided to take y'all through that process of how that really looks like, uh, uh, listen to these people. Now, trust me, that phone call that I, I shared with you all, I had that same phone call with timeshare exit team. Timeshare exit team, by the way, is the timeshare exit um agency that Dave Ramsey endorsed the one that is now out of business because so many timeshare companies went after them suing them suing them suing them and they just couldn't afford to keep up with the lawsuits the the it's expensive to be sued it's expensive to fight a lawsuit and they couldn't keep up so they was driven out of the business again shady timeshare practices you know they noticed the timeshare is a trillion dollar industry because of people like you and me feeding into them right and so and they get to they really do get to triple they get to dip into their pot 
almost triple because they sell you a product. They sell you a room that you're paying for one week out of the year. 52 weeks in a year means that there's 52 possible people also paying for that room. Right? Half of us don't even use the timeshare. So therefore, when the timeshare is empty, is vacant, they get to rent that room out on sites like um, Airbnb, on sites like Expedia.com, Travelocity, um, Hotels.com, Booking.com. I can go and look up my timeshare and try to book it as a regular person and find availability. Right? So this industry has money, has long money. Okay, and so therefore to fight them legally is virtually impossible. But luckily, because I put that video out, again, thanks to y'all, y'all was giving me some excellent suggestions, such as, why don't you just call the timeshare and see what happens? Duh! I didn't even think about that. And some of you shared um, um, testimonies on how you successfully did that, how you successfully was able to do a deed back. So I'm definitely going to inquire into that. So anyways, that's that. Um, next, uh, we are getting ready to go on another vacation. This time we are going on a cruise. It's a Bahamas cruise. It's a simple weekend cruise because we're taking the girls. We're taking G, my lovely man, Jay's daughter, and we are taking her cousin, Aaliyah. And this is for her 15th birthday. And we're only doing a quick weekend trip because the girls are still in school. And she happens to be born right in the middle of the school year. Y'all know I was ready to pull that baby, pull them babies out for a whole week to go on a longer cruise. But it was like, girl, you got to um, be responsible. So we're doing a long trip. And that is going to be so much fun. We're going to do something we never did before. I've never did before. And that is play with dolphins. Not swim with the dolphins, but play with the dolphins. Y'all, I am really giving myself permission to walk in the energy of abundance and the energy of enjoying my money. Seriously, think about this, guys. When a lot of people are on a long-term debt-free plan, you spend years working to get out of debt. You spend years living under financial discipline. You spend years denying yourself some luxuries in life, maybe not going out to as many restaurants, maybe not taking as many vacations, maybe not even taking any vacations to achieve a goal. But what I've been finding is that there's so many of you out there who once you achieve that goal, you're like, now what? You don't feel comfortable spending money. You don't feel comfortable, um, you know, just doing things that you feel may not be as disciplined as you have been used to being. So a lot of times I find that what people do is they enroll themselves back in debt. Just so that they can feel like they're accomplishing something. Just so that they can feel like they have a goal to work towards. Just so that they can continue doing what they know. And what they know is managing debt. Right? I feel that there is a way to try to balance the two to try to really start especially let's say like you're coming to the end of your debt-free journey to stop kind of weaning yourself off of that system and giving yourself permission to spend one of the things I would suggest is to give yourself a spending budget some of y'all do that anyway some of y'all do that anyway okay but give yourselves a frivolous budget, a fun budget, a budget that says, you know what, no matter what, every month I have to spend at least this much money. Because you got to start giving yourself permission to walk in your abundance, to walk in your freedom, to walk in the energy of wealth. That's what I'm doing. Because honestly, I've been so financially disciplined for so many years, practically all my life, that even spending my money frivolously feels irresponsible to me doesn't always feel as good to me I have guilt when it comes to it I have to really give myself a lot of self-talk like girl you deserve this like I really have to weigh up I have to find like all these pros before I feel good about my decision of doing it so I'm trying to free up that energy a little bit and really walk in the energy of abundance for real and a lot of you all gave me help with this towards the end of last year where I was telling you I was feeling financial burnout uh, I was just not even feeling all that motivated about my mortgage payoff journey and you guys were like listen 
take your foot off the gas, slow down, and spend your money. Do something fun with your money. And I did. And I really liked how that felt. And so I'm giving myself permission to do that more often than not. Now, I'm not going to say that this is for everybody. I'm not. Guys, I've already reached so many milestones. A, I'm debt free, minus my major mortgage. I have years, <laughs> years of um, emergency funds saved up so that if I wanted to, I could stop. Actually, honestly, for real, for real, if I wanted to, I could retire today. I could stop working and still have enough money and bring in enough money to maintain this lifestyle minus all of the crazy vacation and of course but to maintain and pay and do the things that I do right now I could do that and so therefore I was like okay girl I know you want to pay off this house but you ain't got to go pay it off tomorrow you don't you get to enjoy your now now and so that's what I'm doing and how that looks for me is this I still live by budget obviously because I want to see what my money's doing I want to know how I'm trending I want to know where I'm spending my money I want to know I don't want to just be frivolous that'll be me going back to where I was before I started this journey okay not really paying attention to my money and feeling like wow I make good money but uh, where is it uh, I don't know so I don't want to do that so this is what I do of course I do my budget so I pay down all my stuff that I gotta pay all my bills but the other thing that I do is I set aside a find a number a fixed number that I have to hit every month that fixed number for my house after I pay my mortgage, I have to do at least a minimum of $4,000 a month extra to my house payment. I have to do at least $1,000 a month extra to my savings. And that is usually to cover long-term um, bills that come up, like my taxes and things like that. Um, so I put those things aside first and I also have a bottom line of what I have to give every single month so I have a bottom line number that I give the minimum of this month much every single month so once those things are out of my budget then I'm free to have fun or do things I probably wouldn't normally do with my other money but of course my goal is always and will always be to save more than I spend. So I'm not just going on shopping sprees and saying, hey girl, you got it, go ham. I'm not doing that. So an uh, example of what I'm doing is this. We're going to the Bahamas, right? We're doing a cruise to the Bahamas. One of the things I would never consider in the past is the restaurants. You know the specialty restaurants on a cruise boat? Because my mindset is, and it still is, you are paying this money to be on a cruise which comes with food, you're gonna eat that food that you paid for rather than give them more money for extra food or specialty dining food. But I'm actually reconsidering. So I actually looked at the prices for the special food and um, guys, you know what? They have this one package. Now this cruise is only like three days, three to four day cruise, but they have this one package where you can pay $106 per adult. And you can go to, I think, five of the specialty restaurants. That's actually not bad because honestly, the food in the specialty restaurants do taste better. Um, I'm not going to do that on this cruise, but I am considering us doing maybe at least one specialty restaurant. I'm considering that. And I was going to definitely do it. I wanted to do the chef's choice, but the reason why is because it was going to be just Jay and I, not the kids. They wouldn't go to that um, buffet. They were going to do that. Oh, gosh. There's a ooh, horrible accident on the other side of the road. But, yeah. So, it was going to be just Jay and I for, like, you know, adult night or whatever. And we were going to do the chef's choice, which comes with chef's choices. But the problem is it starts at 6 30 
I just felt like 6.30 was a little too early. And that's the only time slot they had. I'm going to talk to Jay about it. We'll see what he thinks. But it comes with alcohol and everything. So that's why another reason why it wasn't going to be a good pairing for us and the kids. I mean, the kids wouldn't get alcohol, of course. But, you know. It was just going to be like a little adult time. Um, so we might do that. But that's something I would never normally consider. Especially ahead of time. Sometimes in the moment because you meet some good friends on the ship. And it's like, hey, y'all, let's do this. Let's do this together. And you're like, okay, let's do that. Let's be down. Um, but, yeah. Um, some excursions I wouldn't normally consider. Just just extra spending I wouldn't normally consider. So I'm actually giving myself permission to walk in my energy that if money was just super abundant and you had all the money you wanted to do whatever you want to do, would you do this? And the answer is I would. I would do it. Because it would be nothing but a thing. Nothing but a thing. So that is what I'm giving myself permission to do to get more comfortable with spending to get more comfortable with giving myself permission to not be so stringent and strict about my money we're gonna see how that goes we're gonna see how that pans out because it still is super important for me to hit all of my financial goals um that's about it can any of you guys relate to that yeah that's all i have for you guys that's all i have for you like y'all looking at me looking like shaka khan tina turner uh diana ross medusa okay y'all appointment done vacation braids in we are gonna go back to that side of town but i just want to close out the video because i never well i kind of didn't so thank y'all for watching don't forget to subscribe if you want to talk more things about finances and money and strategically living our lives and talk to me in the comments below until the next video peace i think i said that right like subscribe comment ah.